thank you so much for agreeing to have a chat today. We're here at Aberdeen Art Gallery where you've just delivered your screen printing workshop with the ladies at the Deaf Sewing Bee. But your connection with the VSA goes back much further, doesn't it? Yeah, so I, um, I think I first came into contact with the VSA when I was about maybe eight or nine um, and I went to um, a young carers group that um, the VSA set up. So I went there in Stonehaven and then also in town um, for probably about maybe like five or six years, I think. I went to quite a few Christmas parties and um, was supported like one to one with um, like a support worker as well. So um, yeah, it's a long time ago that I was first introduced to the VSA. Yeah. And who was it that you were uh, supporting? Uh, well, I was actually supported myself because I was um, with a support worker, um, but I at home supported my brother, um, Callum, who's got autism. Um, so, yeah, and then I got some kind of time out with being at home to kind of go out and do some fun activities yeah, and really also meet other carers, um, which, yeah, it was really good. Yeah, and how did you find out about the VSA? I think probably my parents found out about the VSA because um, they were the ones who first... Um, kind of got me in touch with the young carers group and yeah I think they must have found about, out about it but yeah quite a number of years ago now yeah. um, and then I more recently did a um, craft group with elderly carers which I think was 2015 2016 maybe um, and we made different kind of craft projects each week um, so that was like a great experience as well and that was quite a lot of time had passed since I first was like a young carer and then also now um, yeah, doing that group. Can you tell me, Elliot, about the various ways in which the VSA's Young Carers Group supported you? Yeah, so we um, did various kind of outings, um, like across Aberdeen, Aberdeenshire. I remember going like fishing once and um, bowling, lots of different activities like that. And it was more just a chance to get some yeah respite, meet other young carers, um, and just yeah go out and do something fun for the day. We also had kind of like Christmas parties and. I think I did a trip away once for a few days um, with the rest of the group of the carers. So um, yeah, it was just yeah a good form of respite and to get kind of away from the daily Absolutely. like routine yeah. of things and yeah meet new people. Yeah, mm -hmm. and the VSA still has Christmas parties mm -hmm. now, um, and even going back 150 years, as we have been doing on the Heritage Project, one of the things that they did in the outset of their work was to provide holidays for mm -hmm. people that needed a grass fight. Mm -hmm. So 150 years later, and they're still doing those things. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's amazing, isn't yeah. it? Yeah. And that young carers group was really important to you, and. Um, gave you sort of strength in being able to share your experiences with other people that understood what you were going through. Mm -hmm. Yeah, definitely. Um, and I met a lot of really like nice people that I'm like kind of still in touch with now from there. And um, yeah, it was a really good experience. That, that's amazing. Mm -hmm. And obviously you've taken everything that you've learned um, and combined it with your artistic skills mm -hmm. and you now deliver workshops to adults with additional support needs. Um, can you tell me a little bit about what you've been doing on the VSA's Heritage Project? Yeah, so I've been in charge of kind of organising the um, tapestry part of the project. So I've been working with the Deaf Sewing Bee, which is um, a group of ladies who are all deaf and use sign language. And they're all very skilled craftspeople um, with lots of different yeah, experience in embroidery, making quilts, um, knitting as well. And yeah, I basically designed the quilt with them and then um, they're mostly making all of the pieces for the quilt. And we're kind of trying to show a range of um, different kind of stories from the past of VSA and then also represent some of the services that they provide as well. So yeah, we've been working on the quilt um, since about August time we've been making it and it's made up of different patchwork squares. Uh, some embroidery and some printing which we've done some of today as well so I think it'll be a real mix of different um, medias and it'll really showcase the ladies skills and uh, yeah all their the work that they've put into it. Absolutely and what do you think that you've learned from working on this project? How, how has it been as an experience for you? Uh, I think I've learned that communication is so important I kind of I know that anyway my day-to-day -day job that it's you know kind of the most important thing when you're working with someone but just that there's things I hadn't thought of working with people that um, use sign language before and how difficult the communication can be for them potentially you know over email and 
Now, especially with COVID, we haven't been able to meet up as often as we might have done if there wasn't so many restrictions. So um, definitely the communication was um, tricky at times, I think, for, for all of us to kind of feel like we're on the same page. Um, and it really made me appreciate kind of the ladies' experiences through COVID. I think that it was really difficult for them to be able to do things online and, um, you know, the things we take for granted, meeting face to face that weren't able to happen. So. Yeah, I think it was just like a really good learning curve for me um, to yeah, work with them and learn how, the best way to communicate um, through things. And it was really good actually to work with Leslie as well, who's the interpreter. She's really been so helpful and she's got such a good rapport with the ladies. So that's really been re so important having her on board as well. Absolutely. And do you think that your early experiences as a young carer was what motivated you to take your artistic skill and utilise it to run workshops to help people with additional support needs. Do you think that that sort of um, imbued a passion in you to sort of push your career in that direction? Yeah, I think so, definitely. I, I don't think I always knew that, that that's what I would do. And I've always been kind of creative and um, I think I thought, oh, I'm going to go and study fashion and maybe design clothes and quite like quickly realised that that wasn't really where um, I wanted to go and I was more interested in patterns and surfaces and I created work when I was studying people with autism, different objects and fabrics and I, yeah, I feel like there's nothing else really that would be like as su suitable for me like for job wise and things. I really love what I do and I get the most out of, you know, doing things like that with people and yeah, it makes your like life meaningful, I think, and your job meaningful and yeah. Yeah, I mean, that's incredible to, to hear you say that. Um, and it chimes with the VSA's mission and at the heart of their purpose, which is to enable people to live the best of lives. Mm -hmm. um, and you're certainly playing an integral role in doing that in the work that you do in running your workshops such as this and uh, putting together the wonderful tapestry that's actually going to be a showpiece in the BSA's exhibition. Um, so thank you so much for allowing me to be part of the workshop today. Uh, I've never done screen printing before so it was amazing and it was a wonderful opportunity to meet the ladies from the Deaf Sewing Bee and um, really to think about our own and reflect on our own communication styles and um, look beyond our own experiences and our own horizons. Um, so yeah, thank you so much Ellie. Yeah, thank you. <laughs>